Direct from the transistor radio in your lounge room. It's the entertainment duke that the whole family can enjoy. Oh, good. Right. I was mildly concerned there because my Streamlabs was showing up all good, but uh, on YouTube, the screen was black, so uh, that would explain the face of concern. But, <clears throat> g'day ladies and gentlemen, legends of the highest regard, welcome back to the channel, a stream, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, and the DC-3. Uh, if you haven't been here before, I'm uh, just some Aussie, otherwise known as Bryce L. If you have been here before, welcome back. And I've just got one question for you. How the bloody hell are you? Hope everyone's doing fantastically. So a very, 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 very spontaneous stream this afternoon. Uh, originally I had plans to come home, set up a stream for later this evening, uh, they would do because I was off work tomorrow, I'm no longer off work tomorrow, but I was like, you know what, I feel like doing a stream anyway, because it's fun and enjoyable, and I get to hang out with really, you know, epic people on the internet who I don't even know what they look like, and yet they know what I look like, which is mildly concerning, but that's another uh, story for another day. Um, so, I decided let's do some mail runs in the DC-3, seeing as uh, a lot of uh, Australian-based liveries have been released for the DC-3 in the last 24 to 48 hours over on flightsim.to including this Air Queensland livery, which was uh, obviously originally Bush Pilot Airways, and then Air Queensland, and then was bought by Australian Airlines and then absorbed into Qantas. So if the livery looks familiar, that's because it is. It's the livery that Australian Airlines borrowed when it was a subsidiary of Qantas when it overtook Air Queensland. There's a mouthful and a half, and I'm amazed if you guys can keep track of that, you're doing better than me, because I had enough trouble sort of going, hang on, what? They did what? How? <laughs> a lot of amalgamations and coming together and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, so we're going to uh, take this DC-3 on some various mail runs, both current and uh, historic ones as well. Um, how often are we going to do this? I have no idea. The flights are not very long, so it's a really good uh, stream series to fill in the gaps when I've only got, you know, say an hour or an hour and a half, or I'm coming home from work and I want to do a stream and I've got, you know, all those. It, it's really good for filling in the gaps. So this particular series will be incredibly spontaneous. Probably not much notice when we do decide to go live with it. So I apologize for that in advance because it probably means that not as many of you will get the opportunity to, to at least fly along with us. But, you know, sacrifices have to be made sometimes. <laughs> anyway, um, before we go any further, I'm just going to jump into the chat, see what uh, amazing people have decided to join us uh, on such short notice this very, very wintry afternoon, uh, which is a very far cry from the weather we were experiencing 48 hours ago, where it was humid and sunny and we were getting evening thunderstorms and it basically felt like I was in Thailand. Now it feels like I have uh, been transported to Antarctica. Uh, I believe the ex outside temperature is about... Um, seven degrees celsius here in uh gippsland which is really weird because um in like nine days it's considered summer <laughs> so <laughs> somebody better tell uh the weather that it's fucked up um it's a little late and it needs to get its shit together <clears throat> anyway uh there's there's my rant on uh Victorian weather. And I don't mean ancient Victorian weather. I mean weather in... Ne never mind. You know what I mean. Ooh, Qantas bus behind us. All right. So I guess the question is, 
Can I remember how to start the DC-3 without William looking over my shoulder? The answer is, we're going to find out. <laughs> I should be able to, you would think. With the issues I had, the, all the issues that... <clears throat> all of the issues that I had... Let's slow it down, Bryce, and we can get the full sentence out. Uh, with previously starting this aircraft, you would have thought it would become ingrained in my brain on how exactly we go about it. So let's, uh, let's hope that it is all good. Now, this flight is like 45 minutes. So if it seems like I'm just talking, 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 there's a reason for that. <laughs> Because I don't really... Oh, I wasn't really planning... I, I wanted to do a short stream. I didn't want to do like a 35... Hang on, that doesn't even work. Because the flight's 45 minutes. How can I do a 35 minute stream? Magic. That's the only way I could possibly achieve that. But you know what I mean. I'd like to at least uh, be here for an hour and a bit. Otherwise, what's the point, you know? And what's the point for you guys as well if I'm only here for like, you know, 40 minutes? It's a bit like, oh, well, that was a nice, um, yeah, anyway. Uh, Jit says, hi, feel free to say hello to Otto, who enjoyed his PSI <laughs> Autopilot, yes, autopilot. <laughs> what happens when your autopilot gets a hole in it? I feel like that uh, a whole new uh, slew of issues. Anyway, we need ground power. We need battery, but we don't need assault because that's a jailable offense. Um, I think that's what we need there. Yeah, because... Of course, I need to, being a steam gauge aircraft, we don't need to turn on the avionics switch and the alternator and all that because it's just, yeah, not a thing uh, in this old school uh, beauty that we have. So, uh, make sure that, uh, no, wrong way, wrong way. Let's, let's, oh no, hang on, that was the right way. Never mind, don't worry about me. Uh, yep, that's uh, both magnetos are in position. Um, that's not where we want to go yet. We want to fully open those cowl flaps. Moo. Like so. We want to zoom in. And then I want to... Uh, yep, and then we want to jump across and we want to make sure no no i want that thank you i want both tanks selected so there's already we're not making the mistakes we made last time uh we will hit gps i really also need to learn how to fly the non-retrofit version of this the classic version Yeah, there you go. It's what the 9-volt battery says to the potato crisp. I'm ever ready if you're Frito-Lay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I thought my puns and shit were bad, but that's, um... Actually, that's that's at about the same level. Ah, uh, da, da 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 We don't need to come down here, I don't think. I just always like to check. Yeah, that's the emergency autopilot power, the rudder trim, the tailwheel lock, the friction lever, etc. None of the stuff that we really need to play with uh, on this flight. So... That, I know, it was a very confident so. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I think that's it, isn't it? Uh, I will turn on the inverter and the cockpit likes. What? Uh, likes? The cockpit likes. What does the cockpit like? Uh, don't know. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, yep, we don't need any de-icing because we're currently in Outback Queensland and I don't think they even uh, can keep a bag of ice cool for very long out here. So... We're good there. Uh, I guess that's the superchargers. Just 
re-familiarizing myself rather with the interior just once more because obviously there's always things that you miss the first couple of times that you fly an aircraft. Uh, so it's always good to just take the time to yeah make sure that everything is where it's meant to be, which it looks like it is. So, energize the engines. Oh, I wish I could steal some energy from the engines. That would be good. So we're going to go with a left. Uh, so we're going to get some boost going Oh, that is the aircraft. Okay, I was like, what is that noise? No, no, that's the plane. Everything's okay. Uh, and then we want to prime. Oh, hang on. What have I done wrong? <laughs> oh, I know what I've done wrong. I, d I haven't given the engine any mixture or, uh, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, yep, probably going to have to do that again, aren't we? Whoops. <laughs> ah, good start, good start. This, this, this is not going the way I expected it to, I'll be honest with you. What have I missed? That is the question on everybody's lips right now. What have I missed? I've clearly missed something significantly. You know what, I'm going to turn the, um, I'm going to turn the booster pump off right this second, just because obviously... We're going to flood the engine otherwise, which is not a good thing. Um, the primers, yes. Magnetos. Uh, both on, I think. Yep. Correct. So that's all good. That's where it's meant to be. We have full propeller. We have full mixture which is what we want the cow flaps are open yes they are um, ground power is on battery is on hmm We have selected the tanks we have. Let's just check our fuel levels. Um, yep, we're all good there. <laughs> um, mm. What have I missed? Yeah, no, right side tank selector is also uh, on main. We, uh, we traveled over there before to uh, do that, so. Um, I'm quite confused as to why this thing won't just fire up. Uh,
It started. I don't know what I d I don't know what the problem was before, but it started. I did the same things. <laughs> so go figure. <laughs> Okay, so sometimes the switches make the clicking noise, but they don't actually move. I wonder if that's what the problem was. Because you guys would have heard me click that energized switch, but it didn't actually move. So there we go. That That is potentially what the problem is first was first time round, is it hadn't actually registered. That makes a lot of sense. And goes a long way to explaining. Alright, so we need... Uh, to turn off the booster pump and reset the position in the cockpit. Um, what sort of flappage have we got? Hang on, can I remove the yoke? Yes, I can. Um, there we go, that's better. Alright, so I want just a small amount of flaps, nothing too... Crazy, how do I get... Yeah, perfect, there we go. I was going to say, how do I get the yoke back? Help, but no, we good, we good. Alright, so... The active runway here at Thargaminda is 1-3. But in typical DC-3 fashion, or what appears to be typical DC-3 fashion... Oh my god, Midi, maybe it was cold in the Queensland outback heading into summer. <laughs> Sure, sure, Mitty. Let's go with that. It was it was cold in the outback in November. Absolutely. <laughs> um, right, as I was saying, so we've got 20 knots of crosswind, which seems to be a running theme on the channel with the DC-3. It's just basically almost like the sim goes, Oh, oh, you want to fly the DC-3? Well, how about fuck you? <laughs> And then it just, you know, cracks the shits and starts tearing stuff up. And that's that's the way that I imagine the sim reacting to the uh, to me wanting to fly the DC-3. Because it did the same thing um, when we were flying from Essendon to King Island. It just threw up a ridiculous crosswind uh, on departure from Essendon. Anyway, just means that we get to practice our uh, tail dragger crosswind departures. Not a sentence I thought I would say, uh, but here we are. Oh, the sound, the sound of two piston radials. Oh, I know I need practice doing them, uh... Brett, there's, there's no, uh, I'm not even going to try and pretend that I'm, uh, professional at flying tail draggers. I most definitely am not, especially passenger-based tail draggers like the DC-3. Um, I'm not actually, I'm not actually complaining, quite, quite enjoy it. It's just, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we've got a decent amount of uh, paved runway here at Thargaminda. I think we've got nearly 5,000 feet of runway, which for a DC-3 is basically a uh, space shuttle landing strip, really.
I love this thing. I love this thing. It's so good. I understand now why the DC-3 was so utilized for so many years beyond what most uh, aircraft sort of see as a service life. So, this is going to very much be Gently Does It. Especially until that tail comes off the ground anyway. We've been caught by the crosswind and we can't do anything about it, so we'll just take off. <laughs> uh, what the hell happened there? Hang on, I'm going to put this back down because something... Uh, I lost all joystick control on, uh, on departure there, so we're going to... Um, we're just going to taxi back and pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as we uh, as soon as we got off the ground there, I uh, we just went space shuttle status, which is not, of course, correct. So we'll uh, we'll do that again and see see what happens this time, shall we? <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, no, no. So I know I wing stalled, uh, Midi. I'm just was a little bit like, oh, that's interesting because it wouldn't let me recover not that you can easily recover from a wing stall that far from the ground but you know what I mean like it wouldn't let me do anything it just slammed the rear of the aircraft back into the ground is kind of more what I'm getting at So anyway, um, we'll just uh, we'll just depart again, shall we? We didn't break the aircraft too badly, so let's uh, attempt number two, shall we? <laughs> Come on, turn you prick! There we go. Nearly ground looped it, but that would have been okay because we'd be doing very little. Uh, I don't, yeah, maybe maybe it's just because I wasn't quite expecting it midi and it just felt weird. But yeah, something just didn't feel right with the joystick. Uh, but yeah, it could have just been related to the fact that we were wing stalling. Very much so. See, again, we're having the same issue. I am uh, currently full, full rudder, and it's not registering. So something's not right. So what I'm going to do is slam the nose into the uh, ground, and then we're going to reposition ourselves. And I'm just uh, two seconds. I'm going to unplug the joystick and plug it back in because something's not right. <laughs> we're getting no on-ground uh, maneuverability whatsoever. So two seconds.
All right. Let's, uh... So we'll try it from the other... end... of the runway. Seeing as we're basically there by now. And now, see, so the problem... The problem is not at low speeds, as you can see. Everything all G. We got plenty of, uh... No, you didn't get me this time, Mitty. You didn't get me this time. So, we've got on-ground maneuverability at this low speeds, so that's good. Oh, uh, uh, Jit, we were just, uh... Like, there's a massive crosswind here at Thargaminda, but um, I'm just having issues with... Uh, my rudder's not appearing to work after a certain airspeed. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out if it's on my end with my joystick or whether it's the sim or whether it's just the way that the DC-3 operates uh, in a crosswind scenario. So I'm just, I was just checking everything and just re-plugging in the joystick to make sure that it wasn't uh, it causing the problem. That's all. Okay, well, whatever it was, we've fixed the problem there. Uh, where's my mouse? Hello, mouse. There we go. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't a pretty takeoff by any means, but it was never going to be a pretty takeoff with a direct 25 knot crosswind. What I did have on that takeoff was ground maneuverability at all speeds, which is relatively important. <laughs> God, look at the crabbing on departure. So right now, all I'm trying to do is uh, get us some speed. And get us relatively stable in this uh, already. We're only, at, uh, we're only at 1,500 feet and we've got 30 knots of direct crosswind. Which is not nice. Your girlfriend. <laughs> oh shit, jit. That's a shit, jit. <laughs> mm. That's amazing, though. I, I quite like the uh, quite like the way you uh, explain that, mate. Very well done. Very well done. Yeah, just a light breeze, lizard man. Exactly, just a light breeze. But I, one thing I will say is I'm glad that the on-ground issues uh, were obviously, well, they appear to have been related to the joystick. Uh, so a simple plug in and unplug again was all that was required, which was uh, nice because I was a little concerned there. Uh, I won't lie.
Alright, so I'm going to keep the cow flaps open a little bit longer just because we are still at full throttle and we are in a very, very, very uh, hot environment right now. Um, so I don't really feel like overheating the engines if I can avoid it, you know? <laughs> Oh, we got a small stutter there, and I was just going to be like, okay, that's game over. But no, we're good. We are good. All right, speed's looking much more normal now. So, bring the uh, propeller RPMs back. Oh, fair shake of the sauce bottle, mate. Yes, Kevin, that's exactly right. Fair shake of the sauce bottle, mate. Alright, and we can semi-close the cowl flaps now as well. Like, whoop, like so. Beautiful. Much better. Everything's sounding and looking exactly like it's meant to. Yeah, we, uh, we're flying back over where we took off from. The, uh, the huge, huge town of Thargaminda right there. That massive uh, four streets. <laughs> Mitty says, so what are the ones that you use if you crash the aircraft? What do you, sorry, what do you mean, Mitty? What are the ones I would use if I crash the aircraft? What aircraft would I use if I crash the aircraft? Uh, no idea. Yeah, cow flaps. Exactly right, Jit. Cow flaps. Moo. So in uh, in present day, this uh, this flight Thargaminda to Kanamala is uh, currently serviced by Rex. Uh, it's a legitimate passenger service. The soundboard things. Ah, okay. Understood now, Mini. Ah, let me reacquaint myself with. Jesus Christ, what? I was going to say, why is my computer so slow? Um, so if, if, if. Try that again. Got, uh, got a slight, uh, got a scratch on the, uh, good old CD, you know, if, 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 <laughs> um, the most common one, I believe, would be, disaster, that, uh, obviously, because it would be a complete and utter disaster, um, wow, why is my Google Chrome so laggy? I don't, uh, I don't have a huge number of uh, crash soundboards, Mini. Usually, because I don't tend to crash. <laughs> we'll just forget about the two takeoff attempts before. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, in fact, the only, I believe, the only aircraft that I've ever crashed uh, in the sim is tail draggers. <laughs> So that's saying something about my ability to fly a tail dragger. 
not uh, not not amazing. <laughs> Uh, from the, yeah, there would be a lot of road closures up that part of the world right now, Jit, because it's, uh, not that you'd know it, but it's currently wet season. Um, obviously the water falls, doesn't fall from clouds up in this part of the world. Now, I don't know if it's uh, if it's worth doing, but when we do reach our cruising altitude here of 8,000 feet, I'm going to chuck the superchargers on and see what happens. Worst case scenario, we're going to send the uh, send the pistons through the uh, top of the engine. Best case scenario, we're actually going to get some, uh, you know, forward motion is what that's meant to mean. Wet season is an understatement. Uh, my destination is coordinates. Uh, let me have a look. But it sounds pretty correct. Yep, south. Yep, south 28 degrees. East 1. Yes, correct. 100%. Bang on. Uh, legit, you are bang on. Uh, right, so we are at 8,000 feet, so... Doesn't really seem to have done much, honestly. No, that way. There we go, close up the cow flaps. Oh, I'm wondering why there's no audio in the background, because I forgot to turn the flippin' music on, mate. Bloody hell. So my Google Chrome is really struggling. I don't know what I've got open in Chrome that is causing it to struggle. Actually, I do. I've got flightsim.to tabs. That's exactly what it is. I find flightsim.to, if you have multiple tabs open, it becomes very, very resource intensive. There are no fire incidents at this moment. Usually uh, in this part of the world anyway, Jit, if there is fires, as you can imagine, they're not usually, uh, they don't usually threaten people's livelihoods or uh, their properties because as you can see, nobody lives out here. Um, it's actually very common in the really, really, really remote parts of the Australian Outback. So I'm talking in the middle of, uh, you know, like the Tanami Desert and stuff like that. Um, it, it's not uncommon for fires to just burn until they burn out because they, they are, yeah, they're, they're of no risk to anyone um, other than the wildlife. And the wildlife's acclimatized and knows how to get away and deal with it and all that. So. Uh, and usually they run out of fuel because there's really not much for them to burn to begin with.
but yes, no, you're right, Jit. It does, it does affect visibility. That is very true. Um, thankfully, I don't think the sim will uh, depict any visibility issues related to fires. Uh, Lizard Man, don't uh, don't take any notice of that thing. It doesn't update automatically. Uh, haven't been able to figure out why. Gami's got it working on his. He hasn't been able to get back to me on why it won't work on mine yet, but we're at 4.30, I believe. Either way, I'm stoked. <laughs> you have no idea how happy I am uh, about that. Like, uh, I... Honestly, when I returned to streaming and I had about 280 something subs, and that was two months ago, I certainly didn't foresee potentially having 500 before the end of the year. Now, I'm genuinely pushing, hoping, uh, putting in the extra effort to try and maybe get to 500 before the end of the year so yeah I'm uh you, you have no idea how it, I, I feel like I'm five years old when I look at the subscription numbers I'm just like woo <laughs> it's uh what's what it's liberating that's that's the word I'm looking for it's liberating because you sort of go, hey, you know, you're not, you, like, you, you do this for fun, but, and, and to hang out with people and enjoy flying or doing whatever we're doing, and, um, this is the, this is the reward, this is the benefit that you get behind the scenes for it. Anyway, I'm rambling now. What's that, uh, what's the song by the famous, uh, artist Ramble On or whatever? I feel like that needs to be my theme song. I'll, uh, I was going to say I'll Google it, but uh, my Chrome right now is so resource intensive because bloody, uh, I've got, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 flightsim.to tabs open alone. <laughs> Not, uh... But, uh, Lizard Man, also, if, uh, now that I think about your comments a little bit more in depth, um, if you were getting at what I think you're getting at by saying 420 subs lit, yes. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Jit says his girls get hot enough to ignite things, hence I get her the blanket when she asks. Are we talking girl or girls here, Jit? Because, uh... Like, um, are you the next Hugh Hefner? What, what's the go? Playboy Part 2? Took me a moment there, uh, Lizard Man. Took me a moment. Took me a moment. Only one? Yeah. I, I, I assumed it was a uh, spelling error, but I figured I'd, you know, just uh, dig the hole slightly deeper anyway, Jip. For myself, that is. Just, uh, my excuse, Lizard Man, is uh, I've been at work focusing on food, and then I've decided to spontaneously stream a DC3 that I'm not super confident uh, in. <laughs> the really piss poor bullshit excuses, but they're what I'm using anyway. <laughs> um, I don't know Lizard Man. All I know is that there is... Uh, the song is called Ramble On. That's all I, the information I can give you. Uh, you know what? This is what a mobile phone is designed for. When, you're, uh, when your Google Chrome is suffering because 
the person using it is mildly idiotic and thinks, oh yes, 12 flightsim.to tabs, and I have... How many tabs do I have open right now? I have 65 tabs open. <laughs> it's probably not helping either. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, probably Led Zeppelin Lizard Man. Prob that that sounds pretty familiar, mate. G'day, William, mate. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing bloody well, mate. Hope you're doing bloody well. Um, yeah, so the, the 65 tabs in Google Chrome probably isn't helping the performance of my browser either. Oh, your phone has 94. I wonder how much my phone has open. Um, oh my God. <laughs> Have I got some tabs open? Um... Wow. So far at 150. <laughs> It's in excess of 300. <laughs> and I have a serious issue here right now.
serious issue. Where we appear to have um, lost engine. Okay, right. Uh, you know what daddy likes. Good. So we have lost the engines. <laughs> Why have we lost the engines? Um, I don't know, but let's... Uh, no, so mine, uh, Lizard Man, mine has so many tabs, um, that it just has a smiley face at the top. <laughs> I don't know if I should be proud of that or not. What the hell is going on? We're not... Okay, so we're out of fuel in the right main, but we're not on the right main tanks anymore. So... going on oh well I've restarted the left side There we go. Okay. Both en engines are functional again. But, they're not providing any power. Something is definitely not right because we have the tanks selected, the engines are running, but there's no power. So. We have now officially very much uh, run out of altitude to really do anything about uh, the fact that these engines are not functioning.
They're not sounding very healthy either. I wonder if the problem is with the mixture. Because I can't adjust the mixture. We're also not making... Uh, I thought we might be able to make Yulo Airport, which is only 7 nautical miles from where we are. I don't think we're going to make that somehow. I'm just going to go for that highway that's on our left there. That's the best bet and the safest option right now. And then once we're down there on the highway, we can figure out what the hell's going on. Both engines are stopped. All right. Um, that's clearly not what I'm clicking on, DC6. I want the left main. There we go. So I know the left main has fuel in it on both sides. Um, and I know the right main is empty, which is why we're no longer on the right main. Alright. Reset the camera position. I'm going to leave the mixtures in auto-rich. 
because it doesn't seem to like it if I move it. So that's fine. Alright, so I think we're in a position where we can now get back up into the air here. so badly trimmed. What the? Okay. And now, uh, now have it, the same issue that happened before with the, uh, joystick on the ground. Just nothing again. So I didn't pull back or anything then. I literally just had my hand on it and it's, uh, it's pulled back, flipped the Aircraft. I know for a fact the autopilot isn't on either. And the trim doesn't actually seem to have been that out at all, so... It's, uh... Hang on, I'm gonna just... Do that. Yeah, no, no, I... I, I... I, I agree with you, William, but I'm checking the trim now, and it's okay. It's not, uh, it's not weird. Like, it's not out of, uh... It's not super back or anything like that, so... Okay, so Lizardman's had the same problem with the DC-3. Let me ask you a question here, Lizardman. Um... What joystick do you use? Or peripheral, should I say, because not everybody uses a joystick uh, for flying. Because the fact that this is now... So we had an issue with our first takeoff in Essendon when we're going to King Island. We obviously had issues with our first two takeoffs. You use the Thrustmaster Airbus Edition Lizard Man, and I use the Thrustmaster Airbus Edition. And you're having the same problem that I am with on ground. The DC-3 doing weird shit on the ground that we have no control over. I'm not saying that I'm a, uh... Yeah. Except for the throttle control on the BAE-146 Lizard Man. Every other plane is fine. Same thing. Every other plane is fine. Is anybody having any issues with the DC-3 that doesn't have the Thrustmaster TCA side stick, the Airbus thing? Yeah, it will take off and pull hard into a stall. And the only way I've managed to solve the problem, Lizard Man, because it happened twice when we were trying to depart from Thargaminda. The only way to solve the problem is to unplug it and replug it in. But then it only seems to be okay for one... Yeah, so after a slew or a reset or re unplugging or re and replugging in the joystick, it's fine. Hmm. Anyway. Interesting.
You'll, uh, you'll understand what I'm doing in a sec here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Right, uh, right there is Yulo Airport. So I just want to, uh, I want to. I want to test. I, I came across to Yulo Airport because now I want to test something, and that is I want to uh, set the trim right, right, right nose down to like eight degrees or something, and see if it fixes the problem. Such a typical Australian bush strip, this one, Yulo. Alright. So. Can see the pitch trim thing moving slightly. Let's, let's zoom in a little bit more so I can actually see what it's at. So it's just above zero right now. So it was, uh... It, it was maybe two or three degrees back on the trim, which is not completely insane, but let's go for about that. And let's see if we still have the same problem here. We should have the same problem. Uh, let, let's <laughs> worst case scenario we're going to end up back on our roof being very very gentle here in the hope that if it does try to pull back I should actually be able to catch it there we go it's trying to do it right there so as you can see I'm giving it forward forward on the uh, joystick so we know the trim is set correctly but I'm having to still fight it not ideal, but if I have to fight it, at least I now know that I can fight it. I just have to be very gentle 
when flying the DC-3 with uh, this joystick. And I have to make sure that the trim is always stupidly nose forward. Okay, so the autopilot's doing weird things as well, that's interesting. You guys may not have seen that, but when I hit the autopilot button, it went to, uh basically flip over backwards. Ah, <laughs> uh, just one notch of flaps, lizard man. Just one notch of flaps. And now it's back to behaving again. I don't know. Yeah, you're probably, uh, you're probably not wrong there, Jit. Probably not wrong at all. Alright, well we seem to, uh, we seem to have great success now. So I obviously just need to be careful with the DC-3. Which is fine. I don't mind being careful with this thing, it's an old plane. I can do that. says one thing I did was take off full flaps and it back flipped and the next try with no flaps was fine interesting again I guess that just comes down to the whole I just need to be careful with the DC3 take my time with it don't give it the beans the minute I set off on the runway make sure the trim is significantly nose down because you can always pull back further on the stick to compensate but if and then obviously just be aware of the fact that I may need to unplug and replug in the joystick sometimes as well. It's all a uh, it's all a learning process, you know, when you're first trying to understand an aircraft. You too, for the love of God, <laughs> Star, just hang out with me, darling. All right, I'll put, I'll put, you, I'll put you down, put you down, put you down. That's fine. 
all good. Why are you jumping all over me? You just wanted to get down. <laughs> Doggos, what can you do about them? Can't live with them, can't live without them. The other thing I want to obviously keep monitoring is my fuel. Jeez, this thing sucks the fuel, doesn't it? Bloody hell. You too. Just chill. I, uh, jet, I am unfamiliar with P3D. I never, I never simmed in it. Uh, when FSX went finished, I, uh, the only sim that I played with between FSX finishing and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 being released was X-Plane 9, X-Plane 10, X-Plane 11. Information bias combined with flawed coding of physics. So, there obviously appears to be an issue with this particular joystick as well. The fact that I have issues with uh, the throttle on the BAE 146 and I have issues with the throttle on the DC3 and the fact that Lizardman shares my DC3 issues says that maybe this isn't such a great joystick to purchase on a budget after all. <laughs> because it is very, like, the way the mechanicals in it work is very, 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 very Airbus biased. And I find that if I'm not flying a plane that is not an Airbus, it just does weird shit. I just, uh, it's more of a jit. I'm considering maybe running two joysticks. Uh, one for my Airbus aircraft and one for all the other aircraft. Because, uh, for the fly-by-wire and for the any builds, this joystick is just perfect. It, uh, like it, 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 it operates in the, in the, I'll, uh, I'll wait until the brain catches up to the mouth. I was going to say it operates uh, in a way that feels like an Airbus is what I'm trying to uh, say. Hello, you two. Yes, it is almost dinner time. You can see I'm currently doing performing a landing and then I will feed you. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, JIT. Having a few, uh, yeah, controller peripherals for the sim. 
that suit uh, um yeah that suit various aircraft. Zero throttle here. Okay, can't quite go zero throttle. There we go. There's another interesting feature with the... Uh, TCA side stick is if I pull it down to zero throttle, the aircraft acts as if I'm trying to stall it. No, that is very true, Jit. That's very true. So yeah, I might uh, might look at doing that. If you would keep me waiting, I would wait a lifetime. In tricky situations, I will be a lifeline. Nobody's meant to be fighting alone. That's why I'm taking you home. I never felt something like this before, I know. Keep coming back for your time. But it's behaving now, so I'm not. You know, it's not the end of the world. It's 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 doing like it's my inputs are making a difference. So that, uh, that strip down there that is 3.9 nautical miles from us, that is our destination, but uh, we're just flying the traffic pattern. Uh, not that there's exactly much of a traffic uh, pattern <laughs> uh, <laughs> to come into Kunamala. <laughs> not, uh, yeah, not, not many aircraft doing this uh, flight. Uh, Jit says, need a little cash to upgrade that controller. I mean, uh, yeah, I do need to uh, now spend a little bit of uh, time saving some money specifically for that, Jit. Very, uh, very true. I do. Um, but that's all right. That's the, uh, that's the enjoyable part of uh, Flight Sim is uh, until you can afford the better controller or the better this or better that, you, you learn things and you learn to make do... Uh, with what you have access to. So I now know what I have to do to fly the 146 correctly. I know what I have to do to fly the DC-3 correctly. I know what I have to do to get my doggo down from where I'm flying. <laughs> yep, yeah, sorry aircraft. I know, I brought the RPMs down a little too low. I apologize. Yeah, I can feel it. Uh, I can feel it, Jit. We're uh, we're losing altitude a lot quicker than what we were. Which is actually not a bad thing because it's. <laughs> For a moment in time there, we were just not losing altitude at all. So, um... It's nice <laughs> to be able to successfully complete descent. <laughs> to wipe off a bit of speed here but we also need to get the landing gear and the flaps out so I'm gonna start trying to slip the DC-3 in 
I don't know how successful that'll be. Judging by the experience I'm having so far, not very. But we are now slow enough to put the gear down. And that means that we are now slow enough to put the flaps down. Whoops. Oh, okay, I was going to say, am I fighting a wind here? Yes. Yes, I am. The same wind I was fighting at uh, Thargaminda. That's a interesting landing. I, I'm pretty sure the DC-3 is not actually meant to be flown in 20-something uh, in knot crosswinds. That may be part of my problem. Oh yeah, don't worry, Poundy. I'll, I'll take that. Don't you uh, worry your cotton socks. I don't know. <laughs> That's, um, I'll, I'll definitely take that, but uh, I, I also don't think the DC-3 is meant to operate in such conditions. <laughs> Ah uh, yeah, okay, Jit. I can, I can, uh, yeah. Okay, that also makes sense, mate. That also makes sense. We're uh, we're taking the uh, taking the scenic taxiway again, like we did uh, did yesterday's stream uh, when we were taking the DC six out of Uppington. They need to fix the rudder physics, I think. I find the rest of it. Well, sorry, let me rephrase. They need to fix the on-ground physics, I think. Because the in-air physics are great, but I'm having a lot of control-related issues on ground. And it may be my controller. In fact, we it probably playing a part in it. But, um, yeah, I, I was just moving the rudder from side to side you know nothing uh, nothing ridiculous on that arrival and yet the uh, DC3 was jumping around like anything you see like nothing 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 and then it just ground loops I don't think that's meant to happen <laughs> It's almost like there's a dead zone and the dead zone is too big uh, 
Um, and then when you exceed the dead, dead zone, the reaction is too strong because uh, to compensate for the lack of reaction earlier on. If that makes sense. I don't know, I feel like maybe we're overanalyzing this as well. Alright, I have landed. I have landed. Can you both... Calm down. I will get to giving you your food in a sec. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to let these two out of the room and then we'll finish the stream because otherwise I feel like they're going to just start going nuts. Bloody hell. <laughs> Anybody would think that I was made from... Uh, dog food or something the way that they were just reacting then <laughs> but uh, well ladies and gentlemen that was um, an interesting flight <laughs> I must say quite interesting um, I'm gonna assume that the next one that we do is going to be a little bit less um, eventful on the whole uh, emergency landings and crashes and all that sort of stuff hopefully anyway um, Keep learning this aircraft is basically what I am saying. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, hope you did enjoy the stream and find it incredibly entertaining. I know I found it entertaining trying to learn the ins and outs of uh, how the DC-3 operates within the sim. If you guys did enjoy the stream and you haven't yet shown some love to that like button or the subscribe button, I mean, you know, they're very lonely. Um, they could do with some loving. And I mean, hey, I'd be incredibly grateful as well if... Uh, you know, you do show some love to those buttons as it helps me, it helps the channel, it helps, you know, with the YouTube algorithm, all of the, uh, all of the things, you know. Uh, Jit says, email me, I will follow up on that controller subject. And Jit, I think you were saying that you needed to give me your email for some help with Discord. So let's help each other, shall we? You, uh, you give me some advice on the controller. Subject, I'll see what I can do in relation to Discord uh, for you. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, big shout out to all of you for uh, being here. Whether you did fly along, because I saw, uh, I think I saw, what's his name? Ibot, uh, flying along at one point. Uh, if you did fly along, if you were in the chat, if you were doing both, appreciate all of you. Thank you very much for the patience as well and the understanding and the help and the assistance and all that stuff in relation to uh, debunking the DC-3, debunking my, what, what might be going on with controllers, etc, etc. I appreciate it because at least I know that I'm not the only one who's uh, having these issues and that always, you know, helps the, uh, helps the brain function a little bit more when you're not going, oh my god, what am I doing wrong? But, uh... Yeah, Poundy, definitely try the DC-3. It's good fun. You just have to learn its quirks that it comes with uh, at this early stage in the sim. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Legends of the High Guard, wherever you are in the world, you make sure that you look after yourself, stay safe, stay well. Don't do anyone that I wouldn't do. And I'll catch all of you wonderful people in a stream very, very soon. Catch you later.